Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We're God's Church of Love every Saturday. And sometimes God wants us to deal with spiritual giftings, and he also wants us to be mindful of how obstacles come against us, which is a spiritual battle. Because Satan doesn't want you to fulfill, to live up to all that God has planted within. So Satan doesn't want you to be used by God. Satan doesn't want you to be heard by anybody. He doesn't want people to be blessed by you. So he will do anything to stop it. And we bind him now in the name of Jesus before we even get started. We are reading from <clears throat> 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away into these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now, there are diversities of gifts but the same Spirit, and there are differences of administrations but the same Lord, and there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. Let me, let me stop right there to give you a quick example. There are some people who prophesy and they will say something and point it out and bam, 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 cut and dry. Then there are other people who prophesy and they're very tender about their approach. There was one woman I knew who prophesied when she, the anointing to prophesy came on her. Somehow it always came out in rhyme, poetic rhyme. Just happened right on the spot. <laughs> and it always, it always happened, no matter what she said. When she was prophesying, it would always come out as a rhyming poem. <laughs> anyway, so just to share, the Bible says that the gift of the spirit of the prophet is subject. It means comes in obedience, comes in alignment with the prophet, which means that some people like spicy, some people like soft and tender and juicy. And if you are that type of person, either one, your gift will come with those flavorings and those characteristics. Do you get me? All right. So anyway, let's move on. Verse 4, now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. I already read that. Verse 6, and there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the spirit the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge. Now, with wisdom, you kind of understand wisdom when you see what King Solomon did when the two mothers were trying to claim a child. One was the mother and the other one was a kidnapper, basically. And Solomon's wisdom said, I will know who the mother is. This is wisdom by the response they give. So he says, okay, uh, somebody bring a sword. We'll cut the baby in half. And that way, both you guys will do well. So the one who was not the mother said, oh, okay, that way we both lose. That's cool. The other woman who was the mother said, no, please don't hurt the baby. I'd rather she keep the baby and the baby live than for you to hurt it. That told Solomon right there who the mother was. That's wisdom. That's wisdom. All right. Now, to another word of knowledge. All right. Now, years ago, we were in a meeting. And the Lord gave me a word of knowledge that there was a man in the group who had a friend. And the friend was a, 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 a tool of Satan to destroy the man's marriage and his life. And the Lord told me to tell him he would pay over the course of 26 years if he did not break off that friendship because that friendship was not only toxic but it would lead to adultery even though it was simply a friendship so 
That was a word of knowledge. I did not know the man had a female friend. I did not know anything about his personal business. I told it to a group of men in a meeting we held every week. And the man came back after everyone left and said, I wanted to tell you while I was getting my stuff together to go home. He said, I wanted to tell you that word was for me. So when God gives you a word of knowledge, a person, if you get a word of knowledge, you will know what you have no business knowing because the Holy Spirit gave it to you. It'll either be a word of direction, instruction, warning, uh, admonishment, correction, whatever, but God will give you a word of knowledge. All right, here's another one. Let's see. To another, faith by the same spirit. Some people just have faith. They can work miracles. They just do whatever. They speak it and it's done because their faith is that strong. To another, the gifts of healing by the same spirit. You notice it said gifts, plural, more than one, which means there are a myriad of healing gifts. Some people like myself, I have a healing for inner healing. I mean, I have a gift for inner healing. I also notice that if I pray for legs or arms, I tend to get quick results. Not everything else, but that. Some people, they pray for eyes. They get quick results. Some people pray for organs. They get quick results. But they might pray for somebody's foot and nothing happens. There are different types of anointing, different levels, different, different uh, air. It's really interesting how healing works. Okay, number 10. To another, the working of miracles. To another, you know, that speaks for itself. To another, prophecy. Now, prophecy comes in different forms. I won't get into that now for the sake of time. But that's basically you're either foretelling or forth telling. You're telling, you're warning somebody, you see something that's coming down the pipe, and you tell somebody, you prophesy that they need to leave their job, or you prophesy that they need to stay on their job, or you prophesy that uh, they need to go down a different route to to go to work because something's going to happen on the route they're on. And if they go their regular route, they can't tell you, but something not good is going to happen to them. So take a different route to work. That's a form of prophecy. Um, another form of prophecy is God is going to do so and so and so and whatever. But anyway, a prophecy comes in different forms. All right. Now, to another discerning of spirits. And that is something a lot of Christians get twisted, as the kids say. Don't get it twisted. Discernment is not suspicion. There are people out there who are suspicious of everybody because they have been hurt and they have trust issues. So they look at someone out of the corner of their eye waiting for them to blow it because they know, oh, they're not about nothing. Oh, they're, no, 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 no. They got something up their sleeve. I know something about them doesn't sit right with me. I don't like them. Look at that. They think they're all that because they drive a pretty car. That's suspicion and also casting judgment. Discernment is you can be talking to a senior citizen at the store or at a church or at the post office. And they can be smiley face and friendly and all of that. And they want you to come over for dinner. And they're having some people and they thought, oh, you would be a, you, you know, they like to invite a guest that no one knows just so that because they have the gift of hospitality. And they tell you this and they're smiling and they're nice and they say, well, God is good. And they're talking all the religious verbiage that you know, that you're familiar with because you have given off some signs that you are a Christian. Now, this person is smiling and they're friendly, but something in your spirit is warned. Your spirit is ill at ease. You feel like this person is harmful some way. 
You're not being suspicious. You have no reason. There's nothing in you that would suspect you about to accept the invitation. But something goes off inside, an alarm. And you know something's not right. So you politely decline and leave. Now, what God does in those cases, that is called the, the gift of discerning of spirits. That person that you discern might have been a person in a cultic situation, in um, a demonic uh, group that liked to, to pull Christians into their group under the guise of being a Christian gathering only to wreak havoc in their lives. So, all right, here's another one. But remember, discernment is not being suspicious. All right, here we go. Um, knowledge, word of knowledge. All right, here we go. We are at, okay, 10. To another discerning of spirits, okay. To another diverse kinds of tongues. So you might be speaking in different languages, natural languages, but in your prayer closet, you have your heavenly language. So to another, the interpretation of tongues. All right, we'll get into that later. Okay, but the bottom line is that's a gift from the Holy Spirit. You can't fake it. Some of you fake it. But God knows what's real and what's not. And if a person has the gift of discerning of spirits, they know what's real and what's not too. All right. So 11. But all those, all these workers, that one and the selfsame spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. 12. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. Hmm. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jew or Gentile, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, it is therefore not of the body. And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it there? I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were one, were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it hath pleased him, not you. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet. I have no need of you. Nay, much more. Listen, let me stop right there on that. Some of you think you can live without certain people in your life. You know they're Christian, but something about them you just don't like. You know they're Christian, but you called them one week and they didn't call you back. So you scratched them off your list. You don't have the right to do that. The thing you forget about the body of Christ is the only thing perfect in the body is Christ himself, not us. We are all imperfect. We will all, there might be some little minor offenses, some little friction, misunderstandings. That's why the Bible says, if you know somebody has ought against you or you have ought against them, and you, you, you leave your gift at the altar and go reconcile. You don't pray over that. You don't praise over it and ignore it as if it doesn't exist. If there's something going on between you and someone else and they're both you and them are, are the body of Christ. No, 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 no. You got to reconcile with your brother or sister. You don't let that slide. Now, if they're not willing, that's on them. But you make the move. Bust the move, baby. Don't say, well, now they offended me. They better come over here and ask me to forgive them. No, you go to them. Did I offend you? 
I'm so sorry. I noticed that you haven't been talking to me lately. Can we reconcile the difference? Did I do something to hurt you? You open the door. You don't wait for them to come to you. Because if they never apologized to you, and you never did anything to help it out, unless God tells you, leave that alone, you will open up a can of worms. Sometimes for your protection, God will have you stay away. But only then. But when you know that this is something that's reconcilable, you do what you can. Please. Because <laughs> remember, if you don't forgive, God won't forgive you. So even if they don't forgive you, even if they don't accept your apology, you do your part. That's all that counts. That's all you're responsible for. Not their reaction, but what you do. All right. So moving right along. All right. So, whew, let's see. Twenty-one, twenty-two. Okay, Nate. Much more. See, that's why, let me go back to 21. That's why one can say, oh, I don't need them in my life. I don't, I don't need to talk to them. I don't need to be around them. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, you know, I can tell they don't want me around. So forget them. No. If they don't want you around, that's their issue. But you must let them know, I'm sorry if I offended you, but I want to let you know I still love you. And I'm here if you need me, but I just want to let you know if there's a problem, it's not for me because I don't have anything against you. And if I did anything to hurt you, I'm sorry. Period. You open that door for the discussion, for the exchange, for the conversation. All right. So anyway, like I said, you are not responsible for their reaction. You're only responsible for your actions. And your reaction. All right. Um, let's see. Now, this is another thing. It's, it's, I, I got to say this real quick before I, I read on. Some of you have it. You find it very difficult to forgive. And many have been offended by the church. Oh, yes. Ask me how I know. I've been there, done that. Been hurt, hurt, hurt over and over and over again. And every time I had to go to God and ask him to give me the ability to forgive. So when you ask God for the ability that you may not have or you may not even have a desire to do so, you ask God to give it all to you. Be honest with him. He will help you. He will prop you up on that leaning side. He will put it in your hand what you don't have. He will equip you to obey his will. That's what's so fair and so beautiful about God. All right. So, uh, so remember to ask God to give you what you're not able to do. Okay. That's a willing, a willing heart, willing to obey, even when it cannot. And God will give you the can, the can do. All right. <laughs> All right. Now let's see. Verse 23, and those members of the body which think to be less honorable upon these, we bestow more abundant honor. And our uncomely parts, that means our unattractive parts, um, have more abundant comeliness. Now, what I wanted to share with you on that is with, with a plastic cup, <laughs> try to pick up a cup without using your thumb. When you look at all your fingers, the ugliest, the the comeliest looking, uh, I can't think of the word, integers. Anyway, the comeliest finger is the thumb. The least attractive finger is the thumb. But you try to pick up a cup without that thumb. It's very, very cumbersome. The thumb is your leverage. The thumb is what the whole hand needs. To function correctly. Isn't that crazy? You might be able to function without a pinky. You might be able to function without a middle finger. But that thumb, the ugliest finger on the hand, you need that bad boy. Oh, you need that. All right, moving right along. That's just an example. See, the reason for saying that, 
Some of you think there are people in the body of Christ are dense, slow, a little on the wild side. They are what we um, sarcastically call special. So we tend to look down on those people. We tend to look down at the dysfunctional one with a dysfunctional family. We tend to look down at the other one with all those weaknesses. And we, it's one thing not to get close to people when you know that they're toxic. It's another thing to look down at a person because they're weak. What God is trying to show for example, you ever notice, here's a quick example. You ever notice sometimes if a person has Down syndrome or a person is autistic, they are brilliant in playing the piano or they're brilliant in physics and all these calculations. They're brilliant in scientific uh, solutions. Why? Because their weakness is one thing. But God oftentimes compensates them with a genius level of gifting. It all comes from God. I don't care who you are. If you're good at math, if you're good at communication, if you're good at design, if you're good at calculation, if you're good at trigonometry, all these different, uh, if you're good at physics, science, uh, are you good at anatomy, you're a great surgeon, whatever. It all comes from God, y'all. Every gift that falls on man comes from God. So don't get the big head when you're good at anything. Be grateful to God for giving you that gift and ask God to drive, move, direct, strengthen, improve on that gift and show you how to hone your skills that God gave you. All right, moving right along. Number 29, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers? You know, that's a rhetorical question. What that's really saying are not all are apostles, not all are prophets, not all are teachers. Remember, he gives the gift severally as he will, not as you will. We said that before. Are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing? Rhetorical question, no. Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. And that's where we end with the first three verses of chapter 13. Though I speak with the tongues, that's what it says. There I show you a more excellent way. This is it. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Emptiness, empty things make a lot of noise. All right. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mystery and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not Charity, which is love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, in other words, you sacrifice over here and you sacrifice over there and you give all and have not charity, it profits me nothing. God is looking at you like, whatever. <laughs> have at it, whatever. See, Whatever you do, whatever gifts you function in, it must be based, motivated, driven by love. With love comes mercy. With love comes compassion. Do you hear me? With love comes patience. With love comes long-suffering, understanding, kindness. Baby, without that, you don't need to be anywhere around anybody doing anything. You need to sit down and gather more fruit because you do not have the first main fruit of the Holy Spirit is love. That's the fruit. That's, I'm not talking a gift. 
talking love that is a fruit love mercy kindness long suffering all of that those are fruits of the Holy Spirit why are they called fruits because they come from God those are his characteristics and the more we act look feel talk waddle quack like God the more fruits we are showing in this dark ugly world the more light we are shining in this world now here is a caution to those of you who are trying to draw close to God, bear much fruit, and, and function under the unction of the Holy Spirit. You have to know you have an enemy. You hear me? You have an enemy, baby. And they may come in the form of flesh, but your number one enemy is self and Satan. The reason I put self first is because... We are the ones that allow Satan to uh, operate through us. He can't do anything we don't allow. He can't say anything out of our mouth that we don't open our mouth to utter. He can't do anything with our bodies that we don't yield our bodies to, to perform. So whatever you do, whether you're committing adultery, whether you're hooked on pornography, whether you're hooked on cigarettes, whether you're hooked on bitterness, whether you're hooked on jealousy or whatever it is, the bottom line is, baby, Satan is your enemy. And he will use every trick. He will use every, every tactic, any person, any Thing, any spirit of addiction addictions come through demonic spirits by the way so when you know you're addicted to anything get in the habit of rebuking the desire for it in the name of Jesus rebuking the demon of addiction to that thing in the name of Jesus resist the devil some of you got to resist to the point where you're sweating crying pleading begging praying, whatever. You got to get on the phone, say, come over. Let me go over to your house. Let me come with me. Let's go to the store. Let's sit and have coffee because I'm tempted to do this, that, and the other. You got to be transparent with your brothers and sisters in Christ because you need reinforcement sometimes. You need other people to pray for you, but you are the one that has to do the resisting. You are the one that has to obey God and resist the devil. If you resist the devil, he will flee. Some of you think that all you got to do is pray it, ask it, and move on, and you're delivered. No, you have to engage. Somebody can buy you a brand new car, and you might sit in the car, but until you stick that key in and engage that thing and start moving it, that car ain't going to take you nowhere. It's good for nothing. It's the same way. Even though you have the gift of the Holy Spirit, if you don't operate under the unction of the Holy Spirit, and if you don't use your will, engage your will like you have to start that car to resist the devil, guess what? Yeah, I'm not even going to say it because you know it. It speaks for itself. So understand that there are going to be times when Satan will plant people in your life. And when he plants them in when he plants them in your life, is to take the life out of you. Remember that. You will have manipulative people. That's why I did that, that video called this the demon of narcissism. That's why I did that. Because the purpose for it is to plant people in your life. Mm -hmm. Prolific liars, prolific manipulators. To come in and steal what God has given you. Come in and steal your inheritance. Steal your holiness. Steal your commitment to God. Distract you over here. Distract you over there. They take up all your time. You want to hang out? You want to do this? You want to do that? They ain't about God. They're about the benefits that, that comes with hanging out with you. And Satan says, yeah, yeah, go on, go, go on. Yeah, you see that one? I want you to hang on them like glue. Mm-hmm. As long as you're hanging with them, they won't be able to do what God wants them to do because they'll be too distracted to hear it. They'll be too distracted to pick up on the signals that God's giving them. Why? Noise. Noise. 
They are there to bring static. They are there to bring noise. They are there to use you, to, to take up your time, to play you like a fiddle. And you don't know it because they're saying, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's why you need the gift of discerning of spirits. Satan will use all kinds of tactics. You'll be in the body of Christ and you wonder why everybody's invited but, but you. You wonder why everybody is asked to do this, that, or, or the other but you. You wonder why somebody else got the reward you were supposed to get. You wonder, you wonder, you wonder. You cannot get caught up in the cares of this world. That's another form of demonic distraction. You got to be careful about that stuff. With gifts comes responsibility. With responsibility, you must apply awareness. You can't have your head in the ground while your booty shaking to the music. You can't do that. You must be sober, awake, with your eyes wide open, looking around, being careful. That's how God, see, you want to be chosen and used by God. That's how God chose his army. When he told Gideon to go down and, and, and uh, uh, you know, Gideon knew like thousands and thousands he could have called in. And he said, no, bring them to the lake. And he brought them to the brink of the water. And he said, now, tell them to drink. And all these people were drinking. And you know how animals drink. They'll stick their face in the water. They're consumed with, with their thirst, satisfying their thirst. That is a person who is given to their physical appetites, whatever that might be, whether it's lustful, whether it's dietary, whether it's activities, whatever, extracurricular activities. They're given to their flesh. But a person who is on the watch, they're ready to be served by God. They are constantly aware of their surroundings. They're the ones that get on that one knee, put the water, put their hand in the water, bring the water up to their mouth while their eyes are looking around and lap the water from their hand like a dog. That's the 300 out of all them tens of thousands of people that God chose, 300. And that's the way it's going to be in the body of Christ. There will always be a chosen few while the rest are given to their appetites being toyed with, played with, distracted, sidetracked, duped by the devil and their appetites. And they are the ones responsible because they are the ones who are given the devil that reign over them. You hear me? All right. So that's the warning. You have to guard that gift, baby. You got to you, you gotta wave your hand and rebuke and cast. I'm just saying it symbolically. You got to drive the vultures away. You got to run. All of these, 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 these carnivorous creatures out of your life. Or they will come to consume, baby. You hear me? All right. So you pray definitely over the gifts God has given you. You pray over your heart that it stays filled with love and mercy. But you also pray that God give you an ear to hear and an eye to see, that he gives you discernment, not suspicion, and that you're able to go through this life as unscathed as possible because you have acknowledged him in all your ways. Every minute of the day, every hour of the day, every day, every week, every year, you ask God to lead and guide you and block you when you're not supposed to do something. Put a check in your spirit and you will be the available chosen one that God is able to use for the furtherance of his kingdom and the furtherance of his work. Amen. All right. God bless you. I'm done. <laughs> okay. Let me stop the recording.